course, what I love is I'm trying to see what I'm doing. And pardon me, bug. It takes me right out of the group where I want to monitor what I'm doing. So Facebook, please take note. Don't take me out of the group that I'm in so that I can see myself when I'm on. And I don't have to worry about finding later that something happened with the video and it didn't work. So I'm gonna put my mirror right next to my camera and we're gonna try this. I wanna give credit or attribution to Lori Hogg, pretty well-known makeup artist who was thankfully a Mary Kay brand representative and ambassador. She recently did a quick session on her private newsletter for consultants and other beauty um, industry folk on using our liquid eye colors two different ways. So I'm gonna take off the rose colored glasses and show you both really quickly. I've already put my primer on and instead of putting my eye primer like I usually do and my under eye corrector, I'm doing something a little different today. And do note, I do not have anything on yet. She actually suggests mixing your foundation or CC cream with um, concealer and putting it on, on the upper eye area and then the concealer underneath and then blending. So that's what I'm going to do today, which is a little different than what I normally do. I have my liquid product brush. So I'm going to take from the concealer onto the brush and I'm going to apply it. Actually, you should mix it first, right? But I'm gonna put a little on now just cause I'm trying to figure this out and I don't want this brush to be all gross. So I'm gonna put a little on the under eye before I mix it with foundation on my wrist and then apply so that later I'm not contaminating my demo tube of concealer, which is deep beige for me. So I'm gonna put this on my wrist. You may or may not be able to see me doing this um, very well. <clears throat> It's just one of those things where I'm just going to switch some right on the back of my hand, like so. And then I'm going to take this brush and mix the two like a painter's palette. You might notice there are two different colors. And of course, using the back of my hand isn't really the brightest move when you think about it, because my skin is not the same on my hand as it is on my face. Um, the CC cream, just like our TimeWise foundation, adjusts to your skin tone no, we oxidizes and reacts. So I want it on my skin as fast as possible, not on my hand, because if you think about it, it's going to be the wrong shade. Now I'm going to need a minute to blend this thing out. Let me take out a liquid brush. I think I put too much on, but you know what? We can fix it because guess what? This stuff is not a tattoo. It comes off. But since I have dark circles, I don't mind. The way I look at it is I probably could stand to use a little blending. So this is a liquid foundation brush and I'm going to just kind of go through I don't want to wipe it off. I'm kind of stippling. I'm dabbing. But it does brighten the circles. You got to give the woman credit. She knows what she's talking about. I mean, I already see a difference in the under eye area as well as the over overlid area. It's kind of like brightening up that area, but not making it white. It's making it tan. I will draw my eyebrows in a little more properly later. Grab a little bit more. But on the under eye area, while it's still not seem damp, it hasn't adjusted yet. And blending up. I'll be using the same brush from my CC cream anyway. So it might be partly lighting. Stick that there so I can find it later. And I'm going to continue to use the liquid foundation brush with my light to medium CC cream. I can always put prices in the comments below, but I wanted this video to be just educational so that folks watching it on YouTube who really don't care about the price point and just want to see the technique involved. Can do so without feeling like I'm like being all schmarmy and salesy. Soon when I get enough sunlight, because I've actually gone out of the house a few times, I'm going to actually switch to the medium to deep shade, but only after I've gotten a decent pan. So now that my face is all nice and even and not red and ready and weird and splotchy, I could go over all those little spots with the concealer. I have had a couple of, what do they call them? Hormonal related zits, mask knee, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, they go away real quick. See, gone. So the next thing is to uh, apply the eye color, which is the primary reason we were doing this demo. And let's see here. What she was saying was on one eye, I'm gonna do the more natural look and the other eye, I'm gonna play with Chroma Fusion plus liquid eye color because that's what basically she was talking about. Um, so I'm gonna start with the mineral eye color so I don't forget. And I'm gonna start with a very light creamy matte color. And then I'm going to also add any kind of shimmery color there. Slightly darker heels are not down low. And I'll probably put in the crease there a little bit of a, a chocolate color. 
just so you have some definition where my fold in my eye is. So I'll be coming back over this in a minute with our liquid eye color. It'll be the probably light beam and I'll use pink starlight on the other eye. So I'm gonna now use this, but with a cream brush because I have one set aside. So this thing comes with a doe foot applicator and I'm literally gonna brush off of it and onto my eye. Uh, probably too much, let's go on here. So I'm gonna work it up here where I want shimmery colors. I don't want shimmery colors necessarily down low. But this is um, this product does not have primer in it like our old cream eye colors did. But I'm using that concealer and foundation as like a primer. And you see how my bright that upper eye area is, how nice and shiny it is. It's pretty. It's, it's not like I've glued glitter to my eye, but it's definitely nice. And um, as I said, it's a way to augment what's already there. And uh, let's see here. Let me go back over it with the smudger. I'm gonna put in a little more of a copper color in the inside corner, but there, you know, it's, it's a nice look and I can finish that with eyeliner and mascara in a few moments. I will definitely do my cheek and brow as well. Now on this side, she had just using the cream eye color with that base of, you know, concealer. And so this is pink starlight, so different color. And again, I'm gonna put this on the whole lid but I'm gonna blend it out so it's not all concentrated in one area. It's gonna be kind of more natural, neutral, but I think it'll look very nice, you know, for a great daytime look, if that's what you're going for. Really brightens up that whole upper eye area, don't you think? So whether you're using just a little bit of concealer and CC cream, or you're also using the, um, my brain's having a moment, the Chroma Fusion colors with, Either way, I think you, it works out nicely. So I'm gonna just fill in my brows where they're a little sparse, with little dotted lines. And then I'll comb through that. So it doesn't look like I just drew a line on my eyebrow. Cause I don't know about you, our eyebrows are kind of lots of little hairs. It's a composite, not a single line. And they're not twins, they're just sisters. So it's okay if they don't match perfectly. I wouldn't expect your eyebrows to be perfectly symmetrical anyway. And if you do have questions, please contact me. I do private tutorials, video tutorials right now and eventually in person when it's safe to do so. And I, I looks like I missed a spot. I could go over it with brow tint, but I'm not going to because that'll eat up more time than we had planned today. So I'm going to just use a light color like a shy blush. Blend it out as she says, you get kind of a watercolored look. I'm not going there, but I just like the idea of having a little bit of blusher on your face to kind of balance out everything. Now it's time for some eyeliner and mascara and lip gloss. So we're going to just draw with our waterproof eyeliner. Don't go crazy here. I don't necessarily need to do a big wing or cat eye today. Just something quick. Sort of backs up where the lashes grow. There, not too heavy duty. And I use a mascara primer, clear, but I find it's helpful keeping the mascara on. Like it's supposed to. I'm currently exporting our Fanorama, but we have so many to choose from. You really can't go wrong. And let's see here. Just a quick coat. I'm not going to go heavy duty. You could use Lash Intensity, Lash Love, Ultimate, whatever really makes you happiest. We do carry a waterproof. I thought I saw someone comment on social media the other day about waterproof mascaras because they're going to the gym and want to go to the beach and other things. And honestly, if a mascara is designed to be waterproof, it's going to be, you know, harder to take off later. But, you know, you put on like your lower lashes and then leave regular mascara on your upper lashes because the stuff that's designed to give you volume and definition is not necessarily also going to play nice with the way they have to make it to be waterproof. You know, it sounds a little silly, but, you know, it's like a, it's like a wax they're adding to it, a natural wax. And I think that sometimes to get the look you're going for, you need a different 
kind of mascara and that means it can't also be waterproof one mascara cannot be you know it's the old like the lord of the rings one ring don't find them we have no one mascara that does everything but i think this one does a nice job just nice definition a little bit of volume but it doesn't feel like i'm putting too much on and oh i forgot the translucent powder i was supposed to put that on oops um i do want to finish with the fancy nancy lip gloss, which you can't see what I'm doing. So I'll put this up here, you can see. So I'm gonna use a applicator brush because I don't want to contaminate my uh, demo product. Usually we just put it on a tray, but I know to do it this way. A little shimmer, a little shine, but nothing too uh, heavy duty. We have a sheer, we have a, something more opaque and then we have the non-shimmer lip glosses as well yeah lip glosses as well called endless performance which is important because you need something that's going to last i think that's all the pieces i feel like i'm forgetting something but oh finishing spray Ugh. yeah i can't forget your finishing spray and as far as translucent powder goes this could go on after you've done your eye makeup with a brush just a light light amount you don't need a ton so like it, it's white and powdery and you don't need a ton. So I'd tap some of that off and just, you know, lock in the color a little bit better. Helps. You don't want to mattify what I went through the trouble of putting shimmer on, but I think what I needed to do was just to set it. And whoop, I lost my headband. And this is the finishing spray. I feel like this is like my go-to for everything. I don't ever go anywhere without finishing spray. Here's the pretty headband. Keep my hair out of my face when I do these demos and keep the ponytail that I have kind of squished back here from uh, looking really bad when I turn my head sideways. <laughs> so that's the look, what do you think? And it's still hard for me to find the camera while I'm doing this because the camera's in one spot and my mirror is in the other. So that can sometimes be a little bit of a problem. But I'm hoping you enjoyed that. I tried to keep this short and sweet. It looks like time has run out. I need to stop this, save it so I can post it on my other page as well. And anyone who watches the replay will probably pick up on the fact that I'll edit out any of the extra chatter at the beginning. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And remember, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Bye.